Jeremy Bernalier here, back with another video. And yes, I have changed my shorts, not my t-shirt. But uh, yeah, I'm changing to shorts, not my t-shirt. But yeah, guys, um, let's get into the first uh, Ravenclaw fact of two. I can't do the house cup, there's, because at the end here, there's a bit of a spoiler. So we'll just leave that. So we'll go find a different one. Uh, let's get, maybe, a uh, famous Ravenclaw. No, uh, no, that's kind of, that's, uh. I can't find any of these that aren't. Um, mm, we're here, guys. Oh, we can do this, guys. Answer in the comments, right? There is a quiz here, right? Here, Hogwarts quiz. How much do you know about? Oh wait, that's going to give away as well. All right, then we're just going to leave it for now. There's no other facts. Anyway, here we go, guys. I'm going to take off this blanket. I know it's my trademark. So we'll put it up here, because it's just sweating. Right. Chapter 4, The Keeper of the Keys. Boom, they knocked again. Dudley jerked awake. Where's the cannon? He said stupidly. There was a crash behind them, and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in his hands. Now they knew what had been in the long, thin package he had brought with them. Guys, just saying, this chapter got me into um, Harry Potter. So what happened was in school, this will this will be the fact. In school, um, we have this book and it, we read like par chapters out of it, and then we have to do questions and blah blah. And, it. and there was a chapter keep with the keys, and when it read it, I didn't know it was Harry Potter at all. And then somebody in my class who was reading it uh, told me it was Harry Potter. So I was like, oh, that's really interesting. So um, now I'm kind of in, into it. So let's get it. So yeah, just a little story, right? There was a crash behind them, and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in the hands, in in his hands. Now they knew what had been the long, thin, thin package what uh, he had brought with them. Who's there? He shouted. I warn you, I'm armed. There was a pause. Then smash! The door was hit with such force that it swung clean off its hinges, and with a deafening crash, landed flat on the floor. A giant, giant of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was almost completely hidden by a long, shaggy mane of hair and a wild, tangled beard. But you could make out his eyes, glinting like black beetles under all his hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. I sit here like that. He bent down, picked up the door and fitted it easily back in its frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them all. Couldn't make us a cup of tea, could you? I, I can't do his accent. You'll, you probably know who he is by now. It's, it's not been an easy journey. He strode over to, to the sofa where Dudley sat, frozen with fear. Budge up, you great lump, said the stranger. Said the stranger. Uh, Dudley squeaked and ran to hide behind his mother, who was crouching, terrified, behind Uncle Vernon. And here's Harry. And here's Harry, said the giant. Harry looked up into the fierce, wild, shadowy face and saw that the beetle eyes were crinkled in a smile. Last time I saw you, you was only a baby, said the giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah look a lot, you look a lot like your dad. But you've got your mum's eyes. Uncle Vernon made a funny rasping noise. No, I'd have man, man that you leave at once, sir. We're breaking and uh, entering. I shut up, dirty, you great prune. Sorry, I need to pass this. Said the giant. He reached over the back of the shulker, sh sofa, jerked the gun out of Uncle Vernon's hands, bent it into a knot easily as if, as if it had been made in rubber, and threw it into the corner of the room. Uncle Vernon made another funny noise, like a mouse being th trodden on. Anyway, Harry, said the giant, turning back on, but turning back, turning his back on the Dursleys, a very happy birthday to you. Got some it for you, here. I might have sat in it all at some point, but it'll taste all right. From, from, from an inside pocket of his back, black overcoat, he pulled a slightly squashed block, bo box. Harry opened it with trembling fingers. And inside was a large, sticky chocolate cake with Happy Birthday Harry written, it, it, written on it in green icing. Harry looked up at the giant. He meant to say thank you, but the words got lost on, uh, on the way to his mouth. And what he said, and what he said instead was, Who are you? The giant chuckled. 
True, I haven't introduced myself. Ruby is Hagrid, keeper of keys, keeper of keys and grinds at Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and shook Harry's whole arm. What about that tea then, eh? He said, rubbing his hands together. And I'd say no to something stronger if you got it, mind. His eyes fell, fell in the empty grate with the sh shriveled crisp packs in it, and he snort, snorted. He bent down over the fire. They couldn't see what he was doing, but when he drew back a second later, there was a roaring fire there. It filled the whole damp hush with flickering light, and Harry felt the warm wash over him as though he'd sunk into a hot bath. The giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged under his weight, and began taking all sorts of things out of his pockets. A copper, copper kettle, a squishy packet of sausages, a poker, a teapot, several chip mugs, and a bottle of some amber liquid, which he took a swig for, from before starting, make, for, for starting to make tea. That makes sense, sorry, I just realised something. Right. Soon the hut was, fu was full, full of the sound and smell of sizzling sausage. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but as he slid the first six fat, juicy, juicy, slightly burnt sausages from the poker, Dudley fidgeted a little. Uncle Vernon said sharply, Don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The, du the giant chuckled darkly. You're a great pudding of a son. Don't need fattening any more, Dudley. Don't worry. He passed his hostages to Harry, who was so hungry he'd never tasted anything so wonderful, but he still couldn't take his eyes off, his, off the giant. Finally, as nobody seemed, seemed, seemed about to explain anything, he said, I'm sorry, but I still don't really know who you are. The giant took, took, a, uh, the giant took a, a gulp of tea and wiped his mouth at the back of his hand. Call me Hagrid, he said. Everyone does. And like I told you, I'm keeper, keeper of keys at Hogwarts. You'll know all about the Hogwarts, of course. Er, no, said, ha said ha Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Sorry, s sorry. Harry said quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Dursleys, who shrank back in, into the shadows. It's them who should be sorry. I knew you weren't getting your letters, but I, but I never thought you wouldn't even know about Hogwarts for crying out loud. G G did you never wonder where your parents learned it all? Oh, what? asked Harry. Oh, what? Hagrid thundered. Now wait just one second. He leapt to his feet in his anger. He seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were carrying against the wall. Let me just take a sip of this. Some water. He leapt to his feet in his anger. He seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were carrying against the wall. Do you mean to tell me? He growled at the Dursleys. That this boy, this boy knows nothing about, about anything. Harry thought this was going a bit, a bit far. He had been to school after all and his marks weren't bad. I know some things, he said. I can do, I, I, I can, you know, do maths and stuff like. But Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, about our world, I mean your world, my world, your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Dursley! He boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like Mimble Wimble. Ha ha Hagrid stared, wi stared wildly at ha ha Harry. But you must know about your mum and dad, he said. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? My mum and dad weren't famous, were they? You don't know, you don't know. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know what you are. Oh my God, man. You don't know what you are. He, he said finally. Uncle Ver Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell the boy anything. You never told him. You never told him what was in that letter Dumbledore left for him. I was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it, Dursley. And you've kept it from him all these years. Kept what from me, said ha ha Harry Eaton. Stop! I forbid you! yelled Uncle Vernon in panic. Aunt Petunia gave a ga gasp of horror. Har 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 ah, go boil your heads, both of you, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. And that, guys, is where we're going to end the uh, part one of the chapter. I'm just looking here. Oh, here.
Maybe we could we could read on just a bit more, okay? Hmm. There was there was silence inside the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I know what? gasped Harry. A wizard, of course, said Hagrid, sitting back then the, on the sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumping good un, I'd say, once you've tr been trained up a bit. When a mum and dad like hers, what else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. That's, that's where we're going to end it. I know it's only a little bit, but you know. So there guys, I could have left it on a cliffhanger, but I still kind of did. But yeah guys, because you don't know about the letter. But yeah guys, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, leave a like and comment down below uh, if you enjoyed it or not. Com actually, just ask me anything in the comments. But anyway guys, yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, peace. Like the video and peace. Uh oh